Minister Freeland, we will have to repair that. If you cannot hear us, that will be a problem during the press conference. So we can try to repair that on should, Minister should Freeland. Should I wait, then. Jordan? Uh, Paul, stand by should for I just wait? two seconds, yes. Yeah, okay, okay, no problem. be heard OK. Hi, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette conférence de presse. Euh, je m'appelle Catherine Évêque. Je serai votre modératrice aujourd'hui. Je suis journaliste pour le National Post. So with us today, we have uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, uh, Christian Freeland. Uh, we have the President of the Queen's Privy Council for Canada and Minister of Egypt Emergency Preparedness, Bill Blair. We have the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, David Lametti. Uh, we also have the Minister of Public Safety, uh, Marco Mendicino, and the leader of the government in the House of Commons, Mark Holland. So I'll, uh, the ministers will have remarks, and then we will proceed to question periods on Zoom. So if you do have a question, please use the raise hand function, and uh, I will unmute you. So uh, ministers, you have the floor. Okay, well, thank you very much, Catherine. Merci beaucoup. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to first provide a brief update on the financial measures that we introduced through the Emergencies Act to target the illegal blockades and those who fund them. As I said yesterday, information is already being shared between our law enforcement agencies and Canada's financial services providers. Action is being taken. So let me repeat again what I said yesterday. If your truck is being used in these protests, your bank account will be frozen and your insurance will be suspended. The consequences for taking part in these illegal blockades are real. Si vous êtes à Ottawa, il est temps de rentrer à la maison. Si vous envisagez vous rendre à Ottawa en voiture ou en camion, Pour participer au siège illégal cette fin de semaine, vous devriez y renoncer. Mais je tiens aussi à dire ceci. Nous ne prenons aucun plaisir à invoquer ces mesures. Elles sont sans précédent et pour des bonnes raisons. La grande majorité des Canadiens sont des travailleurs aussi doux et respectueux de la loi. Ça fait deux ans que nous vivons avec la pandémie et nous sommes tous tannés. 
Lorsque nous aurons passé à travers cette crise, nous devrons travailler ensemble pour le bien de notre pays. Mais à l'heure actuelle, notre économie et notre démocratie sont confrontés à une menace grave, financée par des acteurs étrangers. Nous ne pouvons permettre à ces sièges et ces barrages illégaux de remplacer l'autorité du gouvernement démocratiquement élu. We are all sick and tired of a pandemic that we've been dealing with for almost two years. When this crisis is over, all of us are going to need to work hard to heal our country. But today, our economy and our democracy are facing a serious and foreign-funded threat. These illegal blockades and occupations cannot be allowed to usurp the authority of democratically elected governments. They cannot be allowed to threaten peace, order, and good government, and they will not be allowed to do so. These illegal blockades and occupations will end, and they will end for good. Now, this afternoon, I also want to speak about the news that was released by the Trans Mountain Corporation a short time ago. TMC today announced their increased cost estimates and the extended completion date for the Trans Mountain expansion project to the third quarter of 2023. Reasons cited include the pandemic, the floods in BC, and significant and necessary changes to deal with the terrain and protect the environment. I want to assure Canadians that there will be no additional public money invested in TMC. TMC will secure necessary funding to complete the project through third-party financing, either in the public debt markets or with financial institutions. Both BMO Capital Markets and TD Securities have been engaged by the government to provide advice on financial aspects of the project. Their analyses confirm that public financing for the project is a feasible option that can be implemented swiftly. They have also confirmed that the project remains commercially viable. Our government acquired TMC and the Trans Mountain Expansion Project in 2018 because we knew that it was a serious and necessary investment. This project is in the national interest and will make Canada and the Canadian economy more sovereign and more resilient. La transition vers une économie carbonétre prendra plusieurs années. Nous allons y arriver. Mais entre-temps, nos ressources naturelles seront encore nécessaires à travers le monde. The Trans Mountain expansion will ensure Canada receives fair market value for our resources. That is not the case today while we are dependent on the United States for market access. Getting our resources directly to global markets will be good for our economy and it will be good for our workers. TMC has signed agreements with 75 Indigenous communities worth more than $580 million and the project will generate over $2.7 billion in Indigenous-based contract awards. Our government has also been working with Indigenous communities on further economic participation in Trans Mountain for more than two years, and we will announce the next step toward that important objective later this year. As we have said from the very beginning, our government does not intend to be the long-term owner of the project. We will launch a divestment process in due course. And before I close, on behalf of the Government of Canada, I'd like to publicly thank Ian Anderson, who is retiring as the President and CEO of Trans Mountain after many years of service. And let me now turn things over to my colleague, Minister David Lametti, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. A vous la parole, David. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. I want to begin by acknowledging that I am speaking to you from the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg Nation. Lorsque le premier ministre a annoncé aux Canadiens que notre gouvernement allait invoquer la loi sur les mesures d'urgence, il leur a aussi assuré que le Parlement aurait le dernier mot sur les mesures proposées. 
Le processus a commencé hier, la première journée du débat sur la déclaration de l'état d'urgence à la Chambre des communes. C'est ainsi que la loi sur les mesures d'urgence fonctionne. Le Parlement joue le rôle central de chien, de garde du gouvernement. My colleague, the government house leader Mark Holland, will be able to provide more detail on today's developments and how the debate will unfold. I want to address two issues that have come up in recent days. First, to those who claim that the disturbing situation across our country is not a national emergency, I encourage them to talk to their fellow Canadians who've been living through it. The residents of downtown Ottawa, people in Winnipeg and Windsor, those affected by multiple border closures and anyone who would join those, those blockades. My point is that these illegal blockades and occupations have been national in scope and are still hurting Canadians. In places where blockades were cleared, we have already seen attempts to reestablish them. They pose an ongoing threat to our economy and to our security. As we saw in Coots, Alberta and other places across the country, some of those involved are alleged to have, much, have had much more sinister motives than simply opposing vaccine mandates. C'est pourquoi lundi, nous devions agir. Et nous ne sommes pas les seuls à croire que la situation est une urgence nationale. Plusieurs premiers ministres provinciaux sont d'accord. Nous le savons parce que nous les avons consultés. Bien que nous voyons des progrès vers la fin de l'occupation et des barricades illégales, la situation continue d'évoluer rapidement. Depuis que nous avons déclaré l'état d'urgence, d'autres barricades ont été évitées. Notre but est simple restaurer l'ordre dans nos rues et à nos frontières pour que les Canadiens affectés puissent retrouver leur vie. To do that, we have given law enforcement the tools they need to finally end these occupations and to make sure that any attempts to re-establish blockades, blockades that cost our economy millions of dollars, are thwarted. The official opposition is also talking about rights. We take rights seriously. So did the progressive conservative government that introduced the Emergencies Act and ensured that it was charter compliant. That was the right thing to do. Ne confondons, ne confondons pas l'occupation et les barricades illégales avec des manifestations légitimes. Les Canadiens savent à quoi ressemble une manifestation. Ça ne ressemble pas à ce qui se passe sur la rue Wellington, à ce que nous avons vu à Coots ou à Emerson. Nous invoquons la loi sur les mesures d'urgence de façon limitée et mesurée pour faire cesser l'occupation et les barricades illégales. Nous l'invoquons pour ceux qui ne peuvent plus marcher en sécurité dans les rues de notre capitale. Nous l'invoquons au nom du droit des travailleurs de gagner leur vie et des entreprises de servir leurs clients. Our goal is to see order restored and for this emergency declaration to be lifted as soon as possible. So with that, I'd like to invite my colleague, Mark Holland, the government house leader, to say a few words. Mark. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Uh, today we were to resume uh, debate for the second day uh, on the use of the Emergencies Act in the House of the Commons to respond to the uh, illegal blockades uh, and the illegal occupation that is occurring outside of this building. Uh, on the advice of parliamentary security, uh, in consultation with all of the House leaders and the Speaker, uh, a unanimous decision was made uh, that it was not safe to proceed uh, with the House sitting today. Uh, je veux dire uh, a grand merci pour la collaboration de mon homologue dans l'autre partie. Uh, C'était une situation où uh, on doit s'assurer la sécurité, pas juste le, le député, mais aussi pour les personnes qui travaillent ici au Chambre de commune. Et alors, c'est possible pour nous de, euh, de travailler ici virtuellement, mais euh, malheureusement, on a besoin euh, des personnes en personne euh, ici aux chambres de commune qui travaillent avec le chambre de commune pour les sessions parlementaires virtuelles euh, pour, euh, pour fonctionner. Uh, we're continuing to monitor the situation uh, outside. It is our hope collectively, and I've had the opportunity to speak with all of my counterparts, uh, that we can resume sitting tomorrow. Uh, clearly, we are going to monitor the security situation to ensure uh, that it is safe, not only, again, as I say, for MPs, but for those who work in the House of Commons who make sure uh, that our session can operate. 
Uh, I want to say that this is an incredibly historic and important debate. We will make sure that every member of parliament who wishes to speak will be afforded that opportunity uh, and that uh, we will not allow the pause that has occurred to impact the final outcome, which is a fulsome debate to occur with a final vote early next week. Parliament will not be deterred from its work. We will not be uh, placed in any position uh, that will see the nation's business uh, not being dealt with. And we look forward to the resumption of Parliament in the very near future. Uh, and now I'm going to turn to my colleague, uh, the Honorable Marco Mendicino. He's the Minister of Public Safety and National Security. Uh, thanks, Mark, and uh, bon après-midi tout le monde. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us for today's update on the concrete actions that are being taken to end the illegal blockades. I'm pleased to report that following a number of enforcement operations taken by police, all major ports of entry remain open for trade and travel across the country, and this is good. I want to thank the work that is being done by police services uh, at every level, local, provincial, and obviously members of the RCMP uh, for their exemplary uh, work on the ground. I would also stress that while this is a positive development, that the progress that we have made at the borders is not cast in stone. Uh, for example, we know that blockaders have made several attempts now to obstruct ports of entry again, including at the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor. However, these efforts have been thwarted thanks again to the work of law enforcement. This morning, I had a very good call with Mayor Drew Dilkins in Windsor, along with the offices of local MPs Kazmierczyk and Massé. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they're receiving all of the support that the federal government could offer. Um, I was very alarmed to hear about reports yesterday of Windsor police arresting an individual who had specifically threatened Mayor, Mayor Dilkins. Uh, and it goes without saying that th these kinds of uh, uh, examples of, of violent aggression uh, towards uh, public officials or any Canadian are absolutely unacceptable. And I want to express my solidarity to Mayor Dilkins, uh, who is a friend and a colleague. We're remaining in close contact uh, with local leaders across the country. Um, here in Ottawa, the past 24 hours has marked an important turning point in the operation. The Ottawa Police Service, with critical support from the RCMP and OPP, have begun taking enforcement actions. Police officers from across the country, including as far away as Vancouver, are assisting in this important action. Arrests are being made and the operation is ongoing. Yesterday, the members of the RCMP OPP joined the Ottawa Police Service at a joint press briefing, and I expect that they will continue to be briefing on the developments of the operation. But before moving on, I want to note specifically that the interim chief of the Ottawa Police Service, Chief Bell, um, specifically stressed the importance and the utility of our government's invocation of the Emergencies Act. And here I'm referring to the special authorities, uh, which have been included under the declaration uh, that allow officers uh, to prohibit um, assembly in uh, so-called no-go zones where there uh, can and has been a significant breach of police. Uh, we've seen over the course of the last number of days, uh, members of law enforcement specifically issue warnings uh, that are in consistency with uh, that declaration. We also know that uh, enforcement authorities and other partners are beginning to use some of the financial controls uh, that are intended uh, to choke off any proceeds or currencies which could be used to aid and abet the illegal blockades. As you heard, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, we remain, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, uh, we remain in close contact to try and uh, support those efforts. And finally, um, the RCMP are making a full use of the delegated authorities to them to ensure that we can commandeer all of the assets, the equipment and the tools that are necessary to not only uh, maintain uh, the efforts to end the illegal blockades at our borders and within our communities, but equally to prevent future such efforts. And here again, I would simply stress that while we've made progress, um, the blockades are not ended. There is an ongoing and fluid situation and the tools that are being used under the Emergencies Act have been of great assistance. I will stress that 
the powers are being exercised responsibly. Uh, they're being exercised in a manner that is proportional uh, to the circumstances, and they're being exercised in a manner that is consistent with the Charter. And as you heard Minister Lametti indicate, uh, there are, are safeguards there that ensure that Sections uh, 7 and Section 8 under the Charter are being used to inform uh, the ways in which these powers are being put to good use. There will be transparency around this. Uh, there will be ongoing debates in the House of Commons. There will be a, a joint a committee that is set up and of course, a mandatory review. And it is our commitment as a government uh, to be upfront with Canadians uh, so that they can continue to have confidence that this is an important power that has been used sparingly, but in a matter that is judicious and responsible and consistent with the law. And this is why we invoked it. For anyone who continues to remain as part of the illegal blockade, we have a very simple and straightforward message. Leave, leave now. Enforcement operations are being undertaken and for your safety, the safety of Canadians and the safety of those law enforcement officers who are on the ground discharging their responsibilities right now, the best thing that you can do is to leave. I also want to take a moment just to advise those who are watching on social media not to uh, be posting uh, any locations or any other information related to police operations so as to protect everyone's safety, including uh, the integrity of those operations as they are uh, being carried out. Au cours des prochains jours, j'ai hâte de continuer à discuter de ces sujets avec mes collègues dans le concours à la Chambre des communes. Le Premier ministre, mes collègues et moi-même avons entamé le débat hier et nous continuerons d'expliquer aux Canadiens et Canadiennes pourquoi la loi sur les mesures d'urgence a été invoquée et l'impact qu'elle a dans tout le pays. Finally, I want to take a moment to address yesterday's disturbing events near Houston, British Columbia. I'm deeply concerned to hear reports of violent confrontations at the work site, including the injury of an RCMP officer. Uh, my thoughts are with the officer and their family. And I want to make it clear that no matter what your cause or your views are on any subject matter, there is never any justification for violence towards your fellow Canadians. And that obviously includes the members of the RCMP and other members who work in our law enforcement. BC RCMP are investigating and I will leave further deta details to them. In sum, Law enforcement actions are uh, resulting in significant progress in ending the illegal blockades. The Emergencies Act has been put into effect and is being used responsibly, proportionately, and consistent with the Charter to help keep our borders open, to protect our critical infrastructure, to keep our legislatures and our parliament open, to keep our economy going, Canadians at work, and above and beyond all to keep Canadians healthy and safe. And that will continue to be the focus that our government continues to show at this very important time. And with that, I will turn it over to my friend and colleague, Minister Bill Blair. Bill. Uh, thank you very much, Marco. Bon après-midi, tout le monde. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. I'd like to join you. Thank you for joining us here today. And I will keep my remarks quite short to allow the media to ask the very important questions I know they must have. Since taking the unprecedented and extraordinary step, of invoking the Emergency Act on Monday, we have seen significant progress. These measures have encouraged those involved in these illegal blockades on our streets and at our vital international trade corridors to leave. Local police have successfully dismantled illegal blockades at vital points of entry across the country, and they have been able to defend them from further incursions and attempts to disrupt our economy and the lives of Canadians. We've responded to the pleas that we have received from provinces such as Alberta, to take necessary action to fill gaps in existing provincial and regional authorities and capabilities. And the Emergencies Act has allowed police to stop people from entering downtown Ottawa to participate in the illegal blockades by establishing a secured area. And it has given the police the necessary authorities to take effective action against those who do not leave the secured area and who are participating in these illegal blockades. The residents of Ottawa who have had to face this invasion for three weeks may now begin to breathe a sigh of relief, but I know they do so with cautiously. Every Canadian has the right to peaceful, lawful protest and assembly. We will always value, protect, and defend this right, but the freedom of expression reaches its limit when it violates the rights 
of other Canadians. Those, this limit has clearly been reached and exceeded. These attempts to damage Canada's economy, to disrupt our communities, to even overthrow democratic institutions must be answered with unequivocal condemnation and strong action from those who are in a position of power and have the ability to do so. Business, businesses and residents in downtown Ottawa have faced serious harms, threats, and intimidation. These illegal blockades at our border brought uncertainty and concern to families of workers in southwestern Ontario, Alberta, Manitoba, and in British Columbia. And while our measures are time limited, we are confident that they have provided the tools, resources, and authorities that were necessary to restore peace and safety and bring these illegal activities to an end. We urge all those who are engaged in these illegal activities to take the opportunity to leave peaceably and allow the people of Ottawa to get their lives back. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. I'll now turn it over to the questions the media may have for us. Thank you very much, Minister Blair. Uh, so we'll proceed with the question period. A reminder, it is one question, one follow-up, and I'm told we have until uh, 2 p.m. Uh, so if I could ask you to, to keep your answers short, if possible. Alors, on va commencer avec Christian Noël, Radio-Canada. Christian, tu peux y aller. Oui, merci. J'attendais que la commande apparaisse sur mon téléphone pour pouvoir euh, enlever, euh, pour pouvoir vous parler. Bonjour à tous. Euh, pour justifier l'utilisation des mesures d'urgence, est-ce que vous êtes capable de m'expliquer en français quels outils sont utilisés en ce moment dans l'opération policière? Et concernant l'aspect financier, combien de comptes en banque ont été gelés et combien d'argent saisi? Uh, Peut-être que je peux commencer et puis je vais uh, passer la parole à, à le ministre Lemetti ou, ou uh, mes autres collègues uh, pour uh, répondre à votre question, uh, Christian. Uh, concrètement, uh, les outils uh, qui, uh, qui uh, présentement étaient utilisés uh, par les uh, forces policières sur le terrain, incluant les prohibitions d'assemblée, Uh, sur uh, quelques areas uh, en Ottawa, mais, ma, mais pas seulement là, uh, uh, dans des autres places, pour uh, régler uh, le, les bougements uh, de les gens, les, le, le qui participaient dans les manifestations, dans les, 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 les blocades illégales. Uh, C'est un important outil uh, pour, uh, pour les forces policières uh, au moment, parce que c'est un outil pour clarifier qu'il qu faut uh, quitter et sortir uh, maintenant. Uh, il y a des autres exemples, par exemple, uh, les, les contrôles uh, pour arrêter uh, l'argent uh, et les autres contributions financières qui peuvent aider uh, le, uh, le blocade illégal. Et comme uh, le uh, vice-premier ministre a dit, Uh, cette, uh, cette, ces autorités sont en force et outils utilisés par uh, l'institution financière et même uh, les, les polices. Et peut-être je peux passer la parole maintenant à, à, à M. Le Metti pour uh, la justification de l'invocation de la loi de mesure d'urgence. Uh, merci, Marco. Uh, merci, Christian, pour la question. Donc, donc le ministre Mendicino vient de souligner Uh, deux outils, c'est-à-dire l'identification la, la, um, et la, uh, la uh, fortification des périmètres, justement, uh, pour, uh, pour aider les forces policières à faire ce qu'ils doivent faire et, uh, et aussi des mesures financières. Et, et je suis sûr que la, la ministre Freeland aura plus à ajouter là-dessus. Moi, je vais vous dire, on a, uh, on a ici... Je ne vais pas parler des, des, des opérations euh, particulières parce que c'est euh, on, on est en cours de, de, de surveiller ce qui se passe, mais la, la mesure pour euh, commander les camions remorques et, et, et les, euh, les, les chauffeurs des camions remorques a eu un impact euh, très positif. Euh, ça a incentivisé les, les personnes, on, on l'a déjà vu euh, à travers le Canada. Une fois qu'on a eu le, on a, on avait la loi, les, les, les camionneurs, les, 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 les camions de remorque se sentaient couverts euh, par la loi et donc euh, plus, euh, plus, plus acceptants au fait qu'ils allaient euh, aider euh, la police parce qu'avant, ils avaient démontré des, des, des fortes réticences. Et les, les, euh, les propriétaires des camions, 
ont reçu, euh, sont en train de recevoir euh, des avertissements euh, de leurs assureurs un, un, ainsi euh, des, euh, des policiers qui vont peut-être perdre leurs, leurs, leurs enregistrements et leurs assurances des camions. Et donc, ça a eu un impact. Euh, on a déjà lu euh, dans les journaux des camionneurs qui ont dit, il euh, faut que j'aille parce que mon employeur m'a dit de, de revenir. Donc, euh, euh, ou, ou à cause de ces assurances. Donc, euh, c'est en train de, de fonctionner. On a donné des outils à nos forces policières. Ils sont en train de les employer et l'impact est très positif. Donc, je vais, je vais passer la parole à, à mes collègues s'ils voudraient en ajouter. Euh, je peux ajouter un peu, oui. Euh, alors, Christian, merci pour la question. Euh, les outils, euh, les mesures financières euh, qui étaient permis par les mesures d'urgence euh, ont un effet. Ils sont mis en œuvre et comme le ministre l'a dit à juste dire, euh, on... Euh, c'est évident qu'ils sont importants et efficaces. Et je peux vous assurer que euh, l'argent, les comptes sont maintenant gelés. Et comme le ministre euh, Lametti a juste dit, que, euh, on a noté, les euh, euh, compagnies ont notifié les camionneurs que l'assurance peut être suspendu. Alors, les mesures fonctionnent, ils ont un effet. Concernant les détails du nom, de nombre euh, des comptes qui sont gelés, euh, les forces policières nous avons demandé de ne pas parler jusqu'à ce moment et je pense que vous pouvez comprendre qu'on parle maintenant dans un moment très, très délicat. Ils nous avons demandé de ne pas révéler les détails, mais je pense qu'il y a évidemment un intérêt public euh, qui est juste euh, de vous donner les détails et on va le faire euh, le, plus, euh, le plus vite possible. Question de suivi, Christian oui, merci beaucoup. Ma question de suivi touche l'état d'urgence elle-même et le vote qui doit avoir bientôt lieu. Si le vote a lieu une fois que l'Assemblée est terminée à Ottawa, j'ai cru entendre dire euh, plusieurs ministres qui disent la situation, c'est fluide, c'est fluide, il pourrait y avoir d'autres menaces à la frontière. Mais là, comment pouvez-vous justifier utiliser un mécanisme d'urgence pour faire de la prévention? Et est-ce que vous vous engagez à ne pas prolonger la loi jusqu'au mois d'avril pendant 60 jours et qu'elle prenne fin après 30 jours? David, est-ce que vous voulez commencer? Oui. Euh, je, et puis, je, je, je crois pour les, euh, les aspects parlementaires, je vais passer la parole à Mark Holland, mais je peux vous assurer, Christian, je peux, vous, je peux assurer aux Canadiens qu'on ne veut pas prolonger euh, l'état d'urgence euh, plus long que nécessaire. On, veut, on a dit clairement qu'on qu veut même revoquer euh, l'état d'urgence, même avant les 30 jours, s'il est possible. Le critère, le seul critère, c'est la sécurité euh, des Canadiens et des Canadiennes. Une fois que la situation est sécuritaire, on va euh, enlever l'état d'urgence. Euh, et aussi, et, et comme, comme on a souligné à plusieurs reprises, aussitôt que possible. Aussitôt que possible. Je passe la parole maintenant à Mark Holland. Ah, oui, c'est clair qu'il va y avoir un vote euh, la semaine prochaine, aussitôt que possible, et euh, il va y avoir aussi un débat. Euh, Aujourd'hui, c'était le temps pour le deuxième jour des débats, euh, euh, mais euh, 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 j'espère qu'on euh, peut continuer avec le débat demain, et euh, je suis certain qu'il va y avoir beaucoup de temps d'explorer les raisons pour lesquelles on a besoin de euh, la le loi pour euh, l'urgence. 
euh, mais euh, aussi, euh, 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 oui, ça c'est la situation actuelle et on doit vérifier euh, le, le, la situation avec la sécurité, mais je pense que euh, le débat peut euh, recommencer demain euh, et ça c'est mon euh, entente maintenant. Merci. On va passer à Greg Quinn, Market News International. You can unmute yourself. Hello. Um, I've, I've heard comments that the, the, the protesters must leave because they have been heard. I'm wondering if you can say after these protests, what will the government do to address the underlying anger that the, the protesters are representing? I'm happy to address that. Um, look. I think that for all Canadians, what we have seen over the past three weeks has been deeply disturbing. Um, I think that all of us feel very deeply this is not how Canada is supposed to work. Uh, our motto is peace, order and good government and there has not been a lot of peace and order. And that is why our government has taken these unprecedented actions. And it's the right thing to do. Canadians have the right to peace, order, and good government, and we will restore it, and we are restoring it. I also think it's very important to be clear that government policy is not made by people who block our ports, who harm our economy, who hurt our reputation as a reliable trading partner and a place where you can invest. Nor is government policy made by people who occupy our national capital. That is very clear and we are firm on that. Now having said all of that, it's really important, as I said in my opening remarks, for us as a country, once this is over, and it is going to end, to come together and really to heal our country. There are a lot of big challenges in the world today, and it's going to be really important for us to be able to face those challenges as a country. And our government is very, very determined to keep our country together and bring our country together. Ending these illegal occupations and blockades is the essential first step in doing that. Uh, secondly, I, I wonder, I, I heard an Ottawa City Councillor at a, a council meeting this week call the protesters uh, domestic terrorists. I remember as well after September 11th, um, there was a lot of work around critical infrastructure and, and threats against critical infrastructure like the Bridge of Windsor being perhaps a, a terrorist offense. Is, has anything that's been done so far rise to the level of something like that? Or, or is this strictly within the realm of regular criminal offenses? I'm, I'm happy to, to take that question first and then pass to colleagues having had some extensive experience uh, in prosecuting um, anti-terrorism uh, act offenses. Um, I, I understand why uh, people are asking uh, the question. And, and certainly I would say that colloquially, if you live in Ottawa, there's no question that at times um, we felt, you have felt terrorized. Um, the actions that have been taken by the illegal blockade uh, have been devastating to the local community here in Ottawa. Absolutely devastating. Um, people have not been able to get around, but it's not just an inconvenience or a disturbance. Um, it's worse. It's far worse than that. And that is one of the reasons why the operation that is being put into effect right now with the assistance of the RCMP, who I want to thank, but equally the other members of uh, police services from around the country, including the OPP, are here to help the Ottawa Police Service uh, restore public safety. Um, there is a big difference about how it is that we uh, talk uh, about uh, the experiences that have been felt by those who live in Ottawa 
and what actually happens in the court of law and what's pro proven and what charges are laid and under what category. Um, and I just want to be really clear that those are all decisions which will be taken by police and not elected members of the government, and nor should they be, because that's not the way our democracy works. Um, but I think right now, if you're a person who lives in Ottawa, you just want your community back. If you live in Windsor, um, you just want to be able to go back to work and not have to worry about illegal blockades um, interrupting um, the supply chain, which is so critical to your employment, to your ability to put uh, food on the table and to provide support to your family and your loved ones. Um, you know, as to the precise details of what charges are laid and under uh, what provisions of the criminal code or whether indeed they may uh, use the Emergencies Act, as you know, officers are now uh, empowered to do where appropriate and where necessary, those are decisions which will be taken independently by uh, our law enforcement branch as, uh, as one would expect that they would be. I would, uh, colleagues, I would just add briefly uh, that I, I would underline, first of all, everything that uh, Minister Mendicino said about the impact on the people of Ottawa. Y you can't overestimate that, that what that, in, that intimidation, uh, that, that disruption, that real profound disruption of sleep and, and daily life and the economy, as well as for the people of Southwestern Ontario, it, it can't be overstated. It really can't. That being said, we have we have a, a number of criminal code offenses, uh, other municipal offenses and bylaws. We enacted the Emergencies Act to supplement the gaps that we found in, in listening to, to police enforcement across Canada and other, and other provinces, uh, other experts. We identified some gaps in terms of enforcement that would help the police. And so we temporarily have an additional set of, of normative powers that the police can use. Moving forward, as Minister Mendicino said, it's always up to the police to, to make operational decisions and enforce laws. Are there things that, that we ought to look at down the road as a result of this crisis? Maybe, and, and we will do that. Uh, I certainly, as Minister of Justice, will look at that quite seriously. Merci beaucoup. On va passer à Raymond Fillion, TVA. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour à tous. En suivant aux questions de mon collègue, Christian, j'aimerais savoir, M. Lametti, qu'est-ce que ça va prendre pour que l'état d'urgence soit levé? En d'autres mots, s'il n'y a plus de barrage au début de la semaine prochaine, lundi ou mardi, pourquoi le recours à la loi serait encore pertinent selon vous? Euh, merci pour la question. Euh, comme vous avez entendu lors de nos, euh, nos, euh, nos déclarations euh, au début, on a déjà, euh, déjà interdit d'autres situations aux frontières de, de se produire. Et donc, c'est très important pour l'instant. C'est une situation très fluide. Il y a beaucoup, euh, beaucoup de coordination entre, euh, entre les mouvements et donc euh, on, et on est en train de surveiller le tout. Évidemment, le, le, les, nos forces policières, en, en travaillant avec, avec d'autres euh, autorités au Canada, est en train d'identifier les menaces et travailler contre. Donc, euh, on a encore évidemment la situation à Ottawa. Euh, on, 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 est, on, on est vigilant à propos des frontières et d'autres corridors importants, d'autres infrastructures euh, très importantes. Euh, on va enlever euh, l'état d'urgence quand on peut et, et aussitôt que possible, comme je viens de dire. Une fois que la situation est sécurisée et on est sûr qu'on qu qu n'a plus besoin des outils identifiés dans la loi sur euh, les mesures d'urgence, on peut, on peut enlever euh, l'État. Euh, pour l'instant, on, 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 est, on est en train de surveiller, de travailler avec euh, les forces policières, d'identifier les trous et, euh, et de, les, de les laisser la place pour faire leur boulot euh, avec leur indépendance euh, dans leurs opérations. Merci. Et Madame Freeland, si vous n'êtes pas en mesure de nous dire combien de comptes bancaires ont été gelés, est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire combien d'individus sont affectés par la, le gel des comptes bancaires? Euh, euh, non, je ne peux pas donner ces détails. Euh, et je suis vraiment, vraiment désolée. Euh, je suis d'accord qu'il y a un intérêt public à en savoir les détails et on va, euh, on va être transparent euh, aussitôt que possible. Uh, J'espère que tout le monde va comprendre que 
uh, no, uh, police, uh, no policiers uh, sont en train de faire un travail très délicat. Ils ont le contrôle opérationnel et ils ont demandé au gouvernement de ne pas entrer dans les détails. Uh, alors, uh, on, 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 doit, on, on doit respecter ça. Merci beaucoup. On va passer à JP Tasker, CBC News. Hi, ministers. Thank you. I was going to say happy Friday, but it's probably not that happy a Friday for any of us. Um, Minister Minichino, you said earlier this week you, you didn't want to see another raucous weekend on Wellington Street like we've seen over the past three weekends. Uh, with that in mind, is it fair to say that all of the major enforcement actions will be carried out today? Well, I appreciate uh, the question. Uh, I think that those are questions that are going to have to be answered by uh, police who are carrying out those operations in real time. And uh, I think we on the government side have done everything that we possibly can to give um, police and other partners uh, within the public safety community all of the tools that they need uh, to, uh, first of all, carry out this operation as uh, as peacefully as possible. Um, I just want to make clear that, uh, you know, no one wants confrontation, no one wants violence. And, and so far, um, I think we have seen um, the police do a remarkably effective job uh, at, at using the tools that, that we have given them, including under the Emergencies Act. Uh, and the reason why I think we all hope that this, this operation uh, will be carried out um, as efficiently and as quickly as possible is because Uh, the community here in Ottawa, and I think not just in Ottawa, but but right across the country, uh, that 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 people have been exceedingly patient. Um, I do worry at times that um, over the last number of weeks, uh, people have felt uh, abandoned and helpless, and have you know at times looked to take matters into their own hands through counter protests and the like. Um, I understand the frustration, but. We, we really do depend on law enforcement to do the job of keeping us all safe, which is what they're doing. And while we've made uh, some uh, progress in particular uh, here in Ottawa over the course of the last 24 hours, um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, we've spoken before about the complexity of the entrenchment of the blockade uh, in Ottawa at different parts uh, of the communities in neighborhoods, but equally on Wellington Street where there are still Uh, trucks uh, and the like that, that need to be removed. Um, all we can do in the government side is make sure that the support is there for law enforcement. And the invocation of the Emergencies Act has been an incredibly important tool for them. Um, and specifically in um, delineating no-go zones uh, and the ability for police to draw upon those authorities to issue clear warnings, uh, to make sure that, um, that we're reducing the footprint of the illegal blockade as much as possible before these uh, enforcement operations uh, kicked into high gear uh, was one of the, the, the ways in which uh, the Emergencies Act has been uh, put to good use. Uh, in addition to that, I would also stress that, um, as you've heard uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland say, uh, the ability to use the Emergencies Act to stop the flow of proceeds and currencies which could be used to, uh, to, to advance the illegal blockade uh, has been effective. And, and finally, just through uh, rapid deployment and making sure that RCMP have the local and provincial authorities to uphold public safety has been another measure uh, that has concretely assisted uh, in the enforcement operations which are being carried out here in Ottawa, which is uh, so incredibly necessary. Um, you know, the people here have, have, have waited a long, long time to come to this moment. And, and we hope that, that obviously that the, that the operation will be concluded as quickly and as peacefully as possible. Follow up? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing really extraordinary images play out on our TV screens. I think it's it's a bit of a shock to all of us who are from Ottawa to see this sort of action. I want to get your reaction to what we're seeing play out and also get your reaction to some of the main organizers being arrested already. We know Chris Barber, uh, Tamara Leach, and just a few minutes ago, Pat King. Some of the convoy bigwigs have also been taken into custody. How satisfied are you to see these folks being rounded up? 
Well, I think um, first we want to express our gratitude to law enforcement uh, for uh, taking those actions. Um, the the individuals that you have mentioned have um, certainly been um, very prolific on social media, and um, and the charges that are laid will play out in court um, independently. Uh, I would point out again, it is not the job of the government uh, to be laying those charges. Uh, to uh, you know to be investigating them, uh, to be uh, it, accumulating evidence. Uh, that's a job for police. And if they make their way to the courts, then obviously a prosecutor and a crown um, uh, will will take uh, take care of those cases. And uh, we, we just on the government side want to see that justice is done. Uh, that is our uh, that is our sworn uh, duty uh, as members of parliament, as ministers of the crown uh, and, you know, as Canadians. Uh, and I think this kind of gets back to what uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland was saying about how the country should work. Um, if you break the law, uh, there is a system in place to hold those accountable. Uh, and certainly uh, there have been many, many instances where on the face of it, uh, there have been uh, flagrant breaches of the law causing great harm to Canadians, uh, really upending our way of life, not only in our, at our borders, but in our communities. And, and we're really relying now on law enforcement to do the job. And I think we're seeing some very uh, encouraging uh, developments on that front. Uh, but as to how the charges will play out and what follows, um, we have an independent judiciary who will make those, uh, make those decisions, uh, adjudications, uh, right from the beginning to the end. And we put our faith in those institutions to do, to do that as well. If I could just add one thing, is that okay? Um, JP, you used the word satisfaction, and I just want to say this is not a day when any of us takes any satisfaction. Uh, for me, this is a day of real sorrow, uh, but also determination. Um, sorrow because it's painful for me that this is happening in Canada. I think it is painful for a lot of Canadians. I think we see our body politic really being violated uh, by an illegal occupation of our capital, by blockades of our essential trade corridors. So that is, it's really, really sad. Um, but it is also a day of determination and it is a day when I think everyone in our government is very resolute. Uh, a liberal democracy must be prepared to defend itself. And that is what is happening in Canada right now. That is what happened with our invocation of the Emergencies Act. And anyone who seeks to undermine our democratic institutions, who seeks to undermine our national economy, needs to know that we are very firm and very clear about our duty to Canadians to defend our country. Thank you very much. I'm told we have uh, 10 additional minutes for questions. So if we could keep uh, questions and answers short, we're going to try to squeeze in uh, two more uh, reporters. So we're going to go with Jacques Dana, Toronto Star. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my first question is for Minister Freeland. Uh, we learned this week that citizens went Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry about that. Okay. No worries. Thanks. Hi, my question is uh, the first question is for Minister Freeland. Uh, we learned this week that citizens went to court in Ottawa to get a court order and succeed it to get a court order to freeze accounts and digital wallets of some of the convoy organizers, leaders. I'm wondering why didn't the government do that? Why did it fall to citizens having to do that? Uh, well, first of all, let me say we absolutely welcome citizens using the courts using the Canadian judiciary and the legal system uh, to have their rights defended and upheld. That is a very good thing. Uh, in terms of the financial instruments, which our government is using right now to act against these illegal blockades and illegal occupation, 
Uh, we reviewed very, very carefully the tools at the disposal of the federal government. Uh, and we used all the tools that we had prior to the invocation of the Emergencies Act, and we determined that we needed some additional tools. Now, some of those tools, uh, we will be putting forward uh, measures to put those tools permanently in place. Uh, the authorities of FinTrack, I believe, do need to be expanded to cover crowdsourcing platforms uh, and uh, payment platform and their payment providers. Uh, so that's that is something that we need to do and we will do, and that needs to be in place permanently. Uh, some of these other tools, uh, like uh, the sharing of information between law enforcement and financial services and the requirement of financial services to be reviewing their accounts proactively and the immunity from prosecution that we have provided to them in doing this. These are extraordinary measures, measures that we absolutely believe are necessary in the current circumstances that are having an impact and let me also point out having a peaceful impact. Uh, and the other aspect of the financial tools that I would point to as being really effective and important is uh, being clear that insurance on trucks that participate in these illegal occupations and blockades will be suspended. So we didn't have those tools. I don't believe that those tools should be part of the toolbox of a government in ordinary times but they are necessary in these extraordinary circumstances and uh, they are having a very uh, clear impact. Doc, if I might add, individual citizens always have a right if they've been damaged uh, economically or physically to go in front of the courts uh, and using, using statutes, using common law principles to argue for compensation from the people that did the damage. And that's what they're doing here and getting injunctions and, 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 and that sort of thing. And those cases will be heard in the courts. As a government, we have to set general rules using criminal law and other administrative authorities that we have. Uh, we've done that, we have a criminal code and we have added with the Emergencies Act, as Minister Freeland has pointed out, other powers that we did not have before in a similar space, but, but using a very different kind of tool to, to address that problem. And uh, I, they are serious. Uh, we will obviously uh, apply them uh, in a balanced way in accordance with the Charter. Uh, let me assure Canadians first uh, that we will do that. But secondly, we'll also look, we'll always continue to look as a government, I as Minister of Justice, Minister Freeland as Minister of Finance, to look at these tools to see which ones are necessary going forward. Thanks. And as a follow up, perhaps this is for Minister Lametti. I mean, is going to court to get an injunction, this seems to have happened quite fast for these citizens and their lawyers saying that the government's moving too slowly to freeze accounts, going to court to get an injunction to freeze accounts, was that not always a tool and still is a tool that the government could have used? We, we can, we can uh, freeze accounts where we have uh, evidence uh, we, we can try to get accounts frozen, uh, especially under the powers we now have, where we have evidence that they were used uh, for Ill illegal activity, in this case, these blockades. The citizens, the citizens who are going to court are going on a different basis, which is they have been economically damaged uh, by the activities of somebody else. It's very, very different conceptually. Um, we as a government are, are acting as we can, which is to create laws and then letting the police apply those laws in our case and, and, and financial institutions to cooperate uh, with, uh, with the, the police authorities as it goes forward. So it's, it's a very different set of circumstances. Um, and, and in general, in applications for injunctions tend to move very quickly. Merci. On va avoir une dernière question de Raphaël Pirot, l'agence CRIMI. Oui, bonjour. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, on t'entend. Euh, donc, cette question est, euh, je crois, peut-être pour M. Lametti ou Mme Freeland. Euh, je veux savoir, le, tantôt, vous aviez dit que euh, vous ne désirez pas que le, la loi soit euh, étendue dans le temps. Euh, Est-ce qu'on s'en va vers un monde où euh, 
si euh, la loi est utilisée à des fins préventives, euh, où la loi, en fait, serait d'une certaine façon perpétuelle, et quel indice, en fait, permettrait de dire, OK, ben là, on a vraiment fini avec les menaces? Si je peux commencer, Raphaël, merci pour la question. La loi en soi est temporaire. Donc, la loi comme rédigée euh, est temporaire 30 jours. Euh, oui, on peut le prolonger, mais avec, euh, avec un autre processus de justification euh, et l'approbation du Parlement. Donc, ce n'est pas quelque chose qu'on pourrait faire facilement. Donc, la nature de, de la loi sur les mesures d'urgence est temporaire. On va l'employer d'une façon ciblée, mesurée, justement pour s'attaquer à certains problèmes particul euh, particuliers. Et c'est ce qu'on est en train de faire. Une fois que ces conditions ne sont plus là, euh, on, va, on va soit le révoquer, soit le laisser euh, tomber après les 30 jours. Mais on voudrait, euh, franchement, on voudrait s'en débarrasser aussitôt que possible. Et je vais ajouter euh, euh, seulement deux choses. Je suis complètement d'accord avec le ministre Lametti que ces mesures d'urgence euh, sont par sa nature ciblées mesuré et, et c'est essentiel, temporaire. Euh, concernant les mesures euh, euh, financières, euh, j'ai parlé du FinTrack, du centre d'analyse, et je pense qu'on a compris que euh, FinTrack, le centre d'analyse, a besoin des compétences euh, plus euh, grandes parce que le système financier a changé. Et FinTrack doit avoir les compétences qui incluent euh, les plateformes de sociofinancement, crypto et, et crypto. Et on, on, on va, euh, on va euh, agir euh, pour faire ça. Merci beaucoup, euh, Madame Freeland. Euh, justement, vous, vous parlez des changements qui seraient euh, permanents euh, au système bancaire, donc qui donneraient plus de pouvoir euh, euh, pour geler des comptes. Euh, je voulais juste être sûr, euh, est-ce que éventuellement, s'il si y a ces changements-là, peut-être que ce n'est pas pour geler des comptes nécessairement, mais il y a, il y a certaines modifications euh, que vous voulez amener qui seraient permanentes, si j'ai bien compris. Non, euh, je pense... Le, oui, non, en fait, c'est juste pour savoir si, euh, euh, si jamais il y a un changement de gouvernement, peu importe, est-ce que ça ne pourrait pas mener justement à certains abus? Non, peut-être je n'ai pas bien expliqué. Um, les changements permanents duquel on parle concernent seulement les pouvoirs, du, les compétences du FinTrack, du centre d'analyse. Uh, le système financier a changé. Le système financier inclut maintenant les plateformes de sociofinancement uh, et uh, le crypto. Et notre système institutionnel, uh, le système de FinTrack, le centre d'analyse, doit avoir le pouvoir comme elle a maintenant avec les institutions financières. On doit maintenant moderniser les pouvoirs du FinTrack pour inclure ces plateformes d'économie digitale. C'est seulement ce aspect-là euh, euh, que dans lequel on doit vraiment moderniser notre système uh, de uh, supervision financière. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Et merci au ministre d'avoir pu rester quelques minutes de plus. Donc, c'est ce qui met fin à la conférence de presse. This ends the press conference. Thank you again to the ministers who stayed a bit longer. So have a great day. Merci, Catherine. Merci, Catherine.